This video is about simplifying complex Boolean expressions using the laws of Boolean algebra. It follows on from a video that explains how the various laws of Boolean algebra can be derived. Ideally, you should familiarise yourself with these laws first. Simplifying a Boolean expression minimises the number of logical operations involved. Because a Boolean expression represents a combination of logic gates, an equivalent expression with fewer operations represents an equivalent circuit, but with fewer gates. This video shows you how it's done. Application of De Morgan's theorem is covered in the next video. These are the laws of Boolean algebra. You're going to need them handy. Learning to apply these laws is a bit like learning to play chess. First, you need to learn the basic moves. Then, over time and with practice, you'll get better and better at combining sequences of moves in a game. Before seeing these laws in action, let's risk stating the obvious. These laws illustrate patterns of variables and operators that we'll be attempting to identify within complex expressions. For example, if we see the term d and 0 within a complex expression, then we can apply the annulment law and replace this term with 0 alone. If we see the term not not c within an expression, this is an example of double negation, and the term can be replaced with just c. Let's also take a look at some useful interpretations of these laws before we see them in action. The annulment law states that any variable anded with zero is zero. Think about it. Any number of different variables anded together with at least one zero in the mix will also result in zero. This becomes clear when you examine this combination of AND gates. The annulment law also states that any variable ORD with a 1 is equal to 1. Indeed, any number of variables ORD together with a 1 will result in a 1. This set of OR gates makes it obvious. In fact, we can go even further and say that anything ORD with a 1 is a 1. So, for example, not A and B, or 1, is also equal to 1. We can also infer some variations of the distributive law. Suppose we identify this term within a complex expression. There are four variables, A, B, C and D, and two sets of brackets. But this is just a variation of the first part of the distributive law, the so-called OR distributive law. We can go ahead and expand this term by anding each variable in the first pair of brackets with each variable in the second pair. The four new terms we've generated are now ORD together. You may have come across an analogue of this method of expanding brackets in regular base 10 algebra. Some people call it the crab claw method. In regular algebra, it's properly known as binomial expansion. Here's a similar variation of the other part of the distributive law, the AND distributive law. When it comes to simplifying complex expressions, expanding brackets might seem like a backwards step, because it increases the number of operators in an expression, making it even more complex. But you'll soon see that expanding a term often creates opportunities to eliminate other terms. Just like playing chess, sometimes it's worth making a few sacrifices to advance your game. Performing the distributive process in the opposite direction is also very useful. Being able to identify and collect together common terms is called factorization. Spotting opportunities to factorize takes practice, but if you can spot them, factorization is a very useful technique indeed. Here's another variation of the OR distributive law. There are two sets of brackets again, but only three variables this time, A, B and C. We can expand these brackets in the same way, making sure that we AND each variable on the left with each variable on the right. Notice this time we've generated the term A and A, which can be reduced to just A using the idempotent law. Here's a similar variation of the AND counterpart of the law. You can see that this time the expansion generates A or A, which again equates to simply A. 
At first sight, this term doesn't look like a candidate for expansion using the distributive law. The pattern of AND and OR operators is not the same as in all the other examples. Let's add some brackets for clarity. We can see that in every other example with two pairs of brackets, the operators within the brackets match. And the operator between the pairs of brackets is different from the operators inside the brackets. But if we think of the contents of the first pair of brackets here as a single variable, then the pattern of terms and operators now looks more like an example of the original or distributive law. And we can go ahead and expand this term. This particular interpretation of the distributive law is extremely useful and well worth keeping an eye out for. You'll see all of these variations in action soon. Let's put these laws to use. Here's an expression with one OR operation, one NOT operation and one AND operation. This is the combination of logic gates that it represents. It has one OR gate, one NOT gate and one AND gate, as you'd expect. Our objective is to simplify the expression, minimising the number of operations involved. There's nothing obvious that can be eliminated immediately. So let's expand the brackets according to the distributive law and see where it takes us. Now we can see an opportunity to reduce the term A or not A to 1 by applying the complement law. The identity law states that anything anded with a 1 is itself, so 1 and A or B is A or B. This is about as simple as we can get with two variables. The brackets aren't needed here. So the original combination of logic gates can be replaced with a solitary OR gate. As a check, you can see that the truth table of the original combination is the same as that of an OR gate. But clearly, a single OR gate is much simpler. It needs fewer electronic components, so it's more reliable, it's faster, it generates less heat and it's cheaper to make. Here's another example of an expression that we might be able to simplify. This is the circuit that matches the expression. The term A or not A jumps out at us. This can be reduced to 1 according to the complement law. Now we can see 1 or not B. The annulment law allows us to reduce this to 1 because anything ORed with a 1 is a 1. Finally, the identity law can be applied, because anything anded with a 1 is itself. So, these two expressions are equivalent. Examine the truth table for the original circuit, and you can see that this is indeed the case. The output of the circuit is always the same as A. In other words, the original combination of gates is essentially useless. A simple connection from A to Z will do exactly the same job. Here's another example, and the circuit it represents. If there's no obvious place to begin, there's wisdom in adding a few extra brackets, for the sake of clarity. It's really important not to change the meaning of the expression when doing this. Notice that terms that were anded together are still anded together. Now we can more easily see that part of the expression can be expanded using the distributive law. The combination of variables and operators highlighted doesn't immediately suggest that this is possible, but by treating the term B and C as a single variable, then we can AND it with B in the second term and we can AND it with C in the second term. Now brackets can be great for improving the clarity of an expression, but sometimes they can have the opposite effect. This is starting to look a bit too busy. So let's get rid of some of the unnecessary brackets this time. The meaning of this expression hasn't changed, but what we've done has revealed opportunities to use the idempotent law. Twice, in fact. B and B becomes B, and C and C becomes C. Yet another opportunity to use the idempotent law has become apparent. 
If A or A is A, it follows that B and C or B and C is B and C. We're nearly finished. Our final move is to make use of the distributive law to factorise the expression by pulling B out of each term in brackets. So, these different combinations of logic gates do exactly the same job. Once again, one of them is much simpler, making it more efficient and more cost effective. This fairly simple expression has two variables and one OR operation and one AND operation, but there's scope to simplify it. This is the combination of logic gates that it represents. First, let's add some brackets for clarity. Strictly speaking, these brackets aren't necessary because the AND operation has a higher precedence than the OR anyway. At this stage, you might have spotted that we can use the absorptive law and simplify this expression in just one step. But suppose for a moment that we don't know about the absorptive law. There are some useful transformations to learn about here. We'll begin by converting this single A into A and 1 using the identity law. At first sight, a backward step, the expression is bigger than it was. But keep watching, this counterintuitive move has a purpose. We can now apply the OR distributive law to factorise this expression. Here it is with one of the A's factored out. This has revealed an opportunity to use the annulment law, which states that a variable ORed with a 1 is a 1. Here, the variable B is being ORed with a 1, so it becomes simply 1. Finally, we can apply the identity law. Any variable ANDed with a 1 results in itself. We're left with Z equals A. So, these two expressions are equivalent. The output of the circuit is always the same as the input. The circuit is redundant. In fact, what we've just done is prove part of the absorptive law, the OR absorptive law. That is, A, or A and B, equals A. Let's see another example. Again, let's pretend we haven't spotted that we can use the absorptive law yet. Note that the brackets are essential this time. They specify that the OR operation should occur before the AND. We'll expand the brackets according to the distributive law. Then A and A can be reduced to just A according to the idempotent law. What we have now is exactly the same as the previous example. We could simply say, let's now reduce it to A using the half of the absorptive law that we've already proved. Or we can work through exactly the same steps again, and ultimately we'll arrive at nothing more than A. We've just proved the second part of the absorptive law, the AND absorptive law. A AND A or B equals A. Let's look at an example that makes use of the absorptive law. Perhaps you'd like to try it for yourself before I show you a solution. There's a multitude of ways that you can approach this problem, and they're all fine if they arrive at the same result. You shouldn't be afraid to try something out and backtrack if it leads to a dead end. Pause the video now if you'd like to give it a go, and I'll show you one possible solution in a moment. Let's run through a solution then. Straight away, we can see an opportunity to apply the AND absorptive law. Now it's tempting to remove one of the B's sitting outside of the brackets because B or B is B, but be careful. These extra brackets make it clear why this would be wrong. The leftmost B is being ANDed with an A, and this operation has a higher precedence than ORing the B with anything else. However, these brackets have revealed an opportunity to apply the OR absorptive law. A and B, or A, is essentially the same as A or A and B. Remember the commutative law? So this term can be reduced simply to A. With no other obvious reductions to be made yet, I'm now going to expand these brackets according to the AND distributive law. 
With a little rearrangement as permitted by the commutative law, we've revealed an opportunity to absorb again. And so we have our final simplified expression. These two very different combinations of logic gates will do exactly the same job. Here's a few different expressions you can attempt to simplify yourself. Pause the video now if you want to give them a try, take your time, and I'll run through some solutions when you resume playing. Here's solution 1. I'm going to use the distributive law to expand the whole term. I can now use the idempotent law to reduce a or a down to a. I can use the absorptive law to turn this term into simply a. And I can use the absorptive law again. With three variables, this is probably as simple as it gets. Here's solution 2. First thing I'm going to do is expand this part of the expression using the distributive law. Now I'm going to use the complement law to reduce not C or C down to 1. The idempotent law allows me to reduce B or B down to B. There's an opportunity to absorb here. There's another opportunity to absorb. And yet another opportunity to use the absorptive law. Finally, B and 1 becomes B according to the identity law. Solution 3. This one's tricky, but definitely worthy of study. I'm going to add some brackets for clarity. Notice how the OR operation is now more prominent, but the terms that were being anded together are still being anded together. I haven't changed the meaning of this expression. I'm going to use the distributive law to factorise it. I've pulled A out of each set of brackets. My next move is to use the identity law to change not C into not C and 1. This might seem like a pointless move, but look at what I do next. I'm going to factorise again, but this time I'm pulling not C out of the expression. By doing so, I've revealed an opportunity to use the annulment law. B or 1 becomes 1, and this has revealed an opportunity to use the identity law. Not C and 1 becomes not C. There's my final expression. To summarise, simplifying a complex Boolean expression minimises the number of logical operations and variables involved. This makes it a powerful technique for simplifying complex logic circuits. The laws of Boolean algebra represent patterns of variables and operations that can be manipulated, reduced and ultimately eliminated from a complex expression. Mastering these laws takes care and plenty of practice. Occasionally you'll run into a dead end, so you'll need to backtrack and try another approach. Knowing you've succeeded in simplifying an expression as far as it will go is one of the challenges you face when learning this skill. Unlike a game of chess, you don't always know when you've won. An online Boolean algebra calculator can help you with this. It will let you see the minimised form of a complex expression, and it will let you check that your intermediate forms are on the right track.